Crenshaw by Catherine Applegate. I want to begin by saying that this is the most difficult book in the curriculum. And this is a difficult text for several different reasons. First, the timeline is not linear. There is a flashback slash memory starting on page 85 that lasts for many chapters. The author signals the reader by writing, me, I couldn't sleep. I was too busy remembering. This memory is about the first time Jackson, the main character, and his family were homeless. And this flashback or memory is key in understanding Jackson as a character. It's also difficult because nothing in this book is explicit. Everything is underneath the surface. Jackson represses all of his feelings. He tells his parents he's fine and everything's good. He doesn't share with anyone and doesn't even really admit to himself how he truly feels. The final reason it's hard is because this is the longest text students have ever read by far. Here is a quick description of the characters. Jackson is a facts kind of kid. He doesn't like anything imaginary or make-believe. He doesn't even like stories because he thinks they're lies. Jackson is witty and wise, and although he's in the fifth grade, he thinks of himself as an adult. He thinks he can handle the truth, and what he wants most from his parents is the truth. Jackson's parents are exactly the opposite of him. Jackson's mother is a music teacher who was laid off. Jackson's father has multiple sclerosis, which forced him to quit his job building houses. But they constantly look on the bright side, and they make jokes about what's happening, and they never really face the facts and make a plan. Robin is Jackson's little sister. She's a great minor character. She's lovable and funny and annoys Jackson a lot, but deep down they have a great relationship. Crenshaw is Jackson's imaginary friend from first grade. Crenshaw resurfaces in this book when Jackson is in the fifth grade. That's a big problem for Jackson because he's a facts kind of kid and he hates all things imaginary. Jackson does everything in his power to get Crenshaw to leave, but Crenshaw says he's only there because Jackson needs him. Here's a quick description of the plot. Jackson can tell that his parents are beginning to struggle again. There's not ever enough food in the house. They're beginning to sell their things. His mom loses her job, and his dad can't do his old job because of MS. He begins to feel afraid they're going to be homeless again. He does not want to live out of a van again, and he thinks that's what's about to happen. No matter how many times he tries to get the truth out of his parents, they end up making a joke or acting like things are fine when he knows they're not. A large chunk of the middle of the book describes what it was like for the family to live in the van. This description helps readers to understand why Jackson is the way he is. Crenshaw returns to help Jackson, even though Jackson is doing everything he can to get Crenshaw to go away. By the end of the book, through the help of Crenshaw and his best friend Marisol, Jackson realizes that he can't hide his feelings. If he's a facts kind of guy, if all he wants is the truth, then he has to be truthful about the way he actually feels. Jackson finally tells his parents everything, how afraid he's been that they're going to be homeless and how angry he feels when they make everything a joke. After a hard but good discussion, Jackson and his parents understand each other and promise to do things differently. Ultimately, Jackson's family doesn't end up homeless again. They find a very small apartment above someone's garage where they can stay for a month or two to figure out what's next. For this book, I would also just recognize, I would also recommend going into the lesson plan, reading all the focus questions and exemplar responses, and then you'll be all set to teach this book.